What's the first thing that you think of when you think of oils? For most, I'd say it's cooking, but then there's aromatherapy for healing ailments. Actually, there are so many different ways you can use oils that we don't even have time to cover it all in today's show. So I'm gonna share with you some of my favorite off the beaten path tips and tricks that will help us explore this amazing world of oils and how they can be applied. So why don't we just jump right in? One of my favorite oils, of course, is culinary oils because I love to eat. Now, we're all guilty of getting into sort of a rut and going for the same oils and using them time and time again. There's a lot of them out there. And so what we're gonna do is go through a mind-expanding exercise and share with you some ideas about some other possibilities. There's a myriad of tastes and textures you're missing if you've never tried oils like coconut grapeseed, or even avocado oils. Love that one. And what about walnut oil? It's a favorite for salad dressings with me. Even within one of the oldest known staple culinary oils, olive oil, there are nearly endless amounts of flavor infusions to spice things up. To learn more, we visited Evolo in Hot Springs, Arkansas, where they create unique tastes to bring to your kitchen repertoire. Today we're in Hot Springs, Arkansas at our store, Evolo Oil and Vinegars. And uh, what we do here is uh, we do everything from uh, oils and, and uh, wine vinegars, not the traditional like distilled vinegars. You know, these you can come in and, and get anything from habanero oil or uh, bacon flavored olive oil. But we do all cooking related oils and vinegars. Uh, most are, are going to be your fine extra virgin oils. Today we're going to start with our garlic and mushroom olive oil. Uh, these are our fusties that we can keep the oil contained in while it's in the store. And so when you pour your oil, you're first looking at the consistency of it. Uh, good oil is not going to have any specks or impurities. And then after that, you want to take it and warm it up with your body heat in your hand for a few swirls, uh, letting it heat up and it release the aromas. And that gives you the chance to smell and you can smell the flavors that the oil contains. And at that point in time, it's very similar to wine and like a sip so that you get, uh, or a slurp, uh, so that you're getting a little bit of air in there with it and that opens up your, your palate even, even more to allow the taste to come through. And then a swirl and there it is. Olive oil has been around as a commodity for over 6,000 years. Uh, started. I think back in like 4500 BC, that was when there's first signs of people uh, refining the oils down for, for cooking and for religious aspects. So. Customers can come and sample different oils, uh, you know, smell their flavors, taste them. Uh, we have bread for the people that aren't diehard olive oil folks like myself that don't want to chug olive oil, so they can dip in bread and, and uh, get the true flavor before they purchase. So it, it's a fun time and a lot of people leave not needing to eat lunch. I hope they leave with olive oils, of course, but uh, I, hope, I hope they leave with a better understanding of, of the, the product. Up next, the uses of olive oil just keep on coming. And later, a refresher course on a cooking skill every chef should know. So you don't want to crowd your pan while sauteing. So stay with us. When you hear the word herb, what do you think? Well, I immediately think of cooking, something that's culinary based. But you know, there are other uses around the home which are pretty cool. For instance, one of the things I like to do with herbs is use the fragrance of them through the stems to create olive oil candles. They're natural, they're easy, and they can really bring the wow factor to your home or particularly if you're having a little dinner party. Now, the list for the materials to create some of these olive oil candles is really quite short. Obviously, you need a jar. I'm using some mason jars. They're readily available, but you can use any sort of glass jar. Next, you're gonna need some wicks, which you can pick up at a craft store, and you'll need a 
thin gauged wire, which will be the support mechanism for the wick itself. And of course, you'll need the fuel for the flame. I recommend the least expensive olive oil you can find for this project. Oh yes, last but not least, the herb of your choice. In this case, I'm using one of my favorites, which is plentiful around my garden, rosemary. And of course, the other addition that you can bring to this project is the aroma. One of the best ways to do this is to simply allow your dried or fresh herbs to soak in the oil for at least a week before using. And another little secret that I've learned over the years is to slightly break up or macerate the leaves of your herb like this, and that will help release some of those essential oils once you drop it down into the olive oil. So whether you're using lavender or lemon thyme, this will work. And choose fragrances that, that you really enjoy. The first thing you wanna do is wrap the end of your wire around the wick. You wanna do this tightly enough that it doesn't fall out, but you wanna keep it loose enough that you can adjust the wick if you need to. You can either bend the wire so that it hooks on the side of the jar to hold the wick in the center of the jar, or wrap it around the lip on the outside. So you can get rather expressive with the way in which you use the wire that actually holds the wick in place. The idea here is just have some fun and get creative. So with my wick in place, supported by the wire, I'm ready to add my olive oil. Now, I'm just gonna pour this in and bring it almost to the top of the jar. And then what I'll do is I'll begin to apply the herbs of my choice. So I've taken little stems of the rosemary. I'm just gonna float those in and fill them in however I'd like to arrange it. I can clip off the wick if it's too long. This is just a little bit long there. Okay, now this one is ready to light. You can see how easy these are to make. Really simple and fun. So think about making some of these the next time you're having a festive occasion, or just having a few friends come over. Give it a try and put your own spin on it. Get out your frying pan. We're experimenting with saute basics. You won't want to miss this. For those of us who enjoy cooking, we know that one of the most essential ingredients in the kitchen are the oils, and there's so many of them to choose from. But which oil do you use with which and why? Well, my friend and chef, Alexis Jones, is here to help us sort that out. Hi, Hi Alexis. Aaron. Welcome to the garden. Thank you, it's great to be here. You find it some peppers? Oh, they're beautiful. So are you gonna use some of these peppers to help us unravel the the great mysteries of oils. <laughs> yes, I mean, I love these peppers raw, but when you cook them, there's so much more flavor that comes right. on. Yeah, so. you, there's so many ways to cook them. Right. Saute or roast them, yeah. yeah. Excellent, well, I can't wait to see what you come up with. I'm looking forward it's to it. It's always creative and informative, thank you. Thank you. There are many different oils with different uses and we're gonna go over a couple of my favorites. We're gonna start with olive oil and extra virgin olive oil. They're the most known of the oils and they uh, derive from a fruit. This is the extra virgin. It is the highest quality of olive oil and um, it's been pressed. And then this is pure olive oil. So I usually do equal parts and we're just gonna do a quick French dressing, French vinaigrette. So I have equal parts olive oil, and I've got some grainy mustard that I'm gonna to use to emulsify with. And we're just gonna add some shallots to here, and a little bit of lemon for some acidity, and to brighten it up. The next kind of oil we're gonna talk about is cooking oils. First we have peanut oil, which is great for frying. The oil will break down at a higher temperature. And my favorite to use for sauteing is grapeseed oil. Grapeseed oil is very versatile and it doesn't really impart any flavor on your cooking. The most important thing with uh, sauteing is to make sure that your pan is hot first because your oil will burn before your pan is hot. So we've got a hot pan and with our peppers. 
So you don't want to crowd your pan while sauteing. And try and get your knife cuts more even so that they cook at the same time. Just gonna let that go. You've probably seen nut oils in the grocery store and not sure what to use them for. I have some pecans here, and pecan oil, and I like to use these for dressings or marinades, but most importantly, when you're toasting pecans or other nuts, it's good to use the same oil to add to the flavor of it. So we have some toasted pecans. I'm just gonna toss them. And we also have coconut oil. Coconut oil has become a, a very popular oil and it's got some healthy uh, attributes. It can uh, help you eat less and it can be used as is and it can also be used in healthy beauty regimens. It also has a high smoke point, so it can be cooked in frying and sauteing as well. It's very versatile. There are many different oils to choose from with different uses for each one, so just choose yours accordingly. When I go to a garden center, I'm often distracted, particularly when it comes to fragrant herbs like lavender. I kind of get into this scratch and sniff mode, smelling these amazing aromas. Look at this lavender, look at the gorgeous blooms on it. The blooms are pretty, but for me, it's the touching the leaves and getting that clean, beautiful aroma that makes it so special. Such a, a wonderful plant that you want to have in your garden. And it's because of the essential oils that are in the stems, well, in every part of the plant that, that gives it that aroma. Now, I gotta admit, I struggle with growing lavender because it really likes a sandy soil, um, an alkaline soil, soil that's a little sweeter than what I have. I have clay and I have acidic soil, so it's not a very good match. Uh, if I plant them in the garden, they tend to suffocate. The roots don't get enough air. But if I plant these little plants in a container with a conventional potting soil, with a little touch of lime to sweeten it, they do really, really well. And I don't fertilize them too much because what happens is you lose some of the, I guess the potency of that essential oil. They go sort of all foliage and green and there's not as much of a concentration of oils in the leaves and stems. I always place my containers of lavender in full sun. It's an herb that really likes the sunshine. I guess the thing to keep in mind is if there's some reason you can't grow a certain plant, there's always some ways around it. And I've just given you a few of the tips on how I get around being able to grow this, one of my favorite herbs, lavender. There's more than one way to eat sunflower seeds. See what I mean right after the break. Who doesn't love sunflowers? They're just so bright and cheerful, just downright perky, beautiful to use in the house. But what a useful plant. You think about all the things that one can produce from sunflowers. I love sunflower seeds. I love to eat them. And then if you cold press them, you can make a healthy cooking oil. In fact, we visited the Wayne Plantation right here in Arkansas and saw them making oil firsthand. I'm Bob Wayne, and this is the Wayne Plantation. I'm fourth generation owner, and I grow a food grade oil using sunflowers. Well, sunflowers are 
are indigenous of North America. Uh, they, they've been around, you know, ever since long before the Indians were here. Uh, the settlers, as they moved in, you know, in the early 16, 1700s, uh, they took these sunflowers back to the European countries and they got spread across there, but they are home here in North America. These are the uh, ray flowers on the outside. And then as you look at the inside of the plant, these are the disc florets. That's what that whole head is called there. As you get closer to it, uh, those are what are called corolla tubes. That's actually where the seed's being developed. Here in about another six to eight weeks, like I said, we're mid-season right now. Of course, the flower will begin to die. The seed will begin to develop and the weight on the heads of these plants will get so heavy, they'll droop completely over and then they start to die out. And like I said, in about eight weeks, we'll harvest the plant. And uh, really, they're so gorgeous right now, they're really gonna be ugly here in about <laughs> five or six weeks. As I looked at the profiles of the oil, how healthy it is, I started comparing it to the canolas and the olive oils. And, uh, the sunflower has about twice the amount of vitamin E as canola or olive. It's got a real healthy balance of the monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, better than anything that I've seen so far. And I'm still doing research on it, but it's a very healthy seed, a very healthy oil. Want to learn more? Visit pallensmith.com for delicious recipes, garden tips, blog posts, and our online store. You know, I just love the fragrance of lavender, and it's perfect in a lavender oil room spray. You can make a room smell fantastic. You know, really, when it comes down to it, there's an oil for just about anything. So why not use these oils in a more creative way? Don't just relegate them to the kitchen for culinary uses. Until next time, I'm Alan Smith. To learn more, we visited the tasting room of Evo O in Hot Springs. Welcome. I call is world domination. <laughs> <laughs>